Hello everyone, this is Greg, your host of Goddamn GameCube. If you enjoy our show, please leave us a review on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you and enjoy today's episode. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Goddamn GameCube. Greg and Riley are your hosts today, and today we are going to be discussing Harold Halibut. And just as a disclosure, we were provided a review copy by the development and PR team of Harold Halibut. Uh, this game was released in April of 2024 for Windows, Xbox Series, and PlayStation 5. It was developed and published by German indie dev team Slow Bros. All right, Riley, why are we talking about Harold Halibut? Let's do this, You man. got me, man. No, uh, we've actually been following this project for a couple of years. Um, it has been reportedly uh, been in development for a decade. Um, there is actually a post on uh, Slow Bros, the development team, their social media from 2016 um, showing Harold and one of the environments in like a semi-finished state. So it seems like it's been in the can for a while. Well, I remember, you can correct my knowledge, I believe we first got turned on to this. There was a trailer that came out. It was a long time ago. Was it maybe three or four years ago? It could have been like 2018, yeah. 2019. And I remember like... Um, I don't know which one of us sent it to who. It was either you found it on Twitter or I did. Mm -hmm. I don't. We put it in like uh, I think one. We retweeted it. I think we did. So we've been looking forward to this game for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So I do want to say uh, we'll we'll make one thank you first. Thank you to the development team and their PR staff for giving us a copy of the game so we could do the review. Yeah, because we were looking forward to this. So um, do you want to talk about like why this game is unique? Sure. Um, the way I would describe this is that all the character models in this game were designed by hand. Yeah. Almost in like a, you would call it like a Wes Anderson or Wallace and Gromit or Gumby yep. kind of style. That's what jumped out to me when we saw the first trailer. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's been programmed into a playable state. Uh, yeah. Like they scanned all the models and stuff in and it's all every, pretty much everything you're seeing is handmade, which is cool. Um, the, the other thing I, uh, I want to say too, before you get into the nitty gritty. So this game did come out to, I would say kind of low or middling reviews. Yeah. Uh, the meta score right now, I believe is a 68 or a 69, but you know, on goddamn GameCube, like we're the ultimate opinion here. So, we're, yeah. So, we're, I mean, buckle up, dude. We're, uh, we're, we're the tastemakers, I would say. Um, and I think we're, I think some of the the criticism that i saw was valid some of it maybe not so much um but i think i will get into all the the nitty-gritty here um so the the premise of this game is it follows harold uh the titular harold who is the custodian or handyman of a human spaceship that crashed into the ocean of an alien planet uh 200 years after leaving earth and it has been there for the past 50 years um so do you want to get into kind of just the the art direction in general and what, you know, you, we talked about all the stop motion stuff, but let's get into, you know, kind of our opinions on, on uh, each little detail here. Um, above all, I think it's crucial to note that uh, to my knowledge, nothing like this has ever been done before. I don't believe so. I think I, it's the I first. Think, I think it's a first, you know, stop motion film has been around forever, but like stop motion game is is pretty groundbreaking, I would Un say. Unless games have done this and they didn't make mention. But. Right. It's, it's the highest profile that I've seen so far. Yep. Um, I think some of the models look better than others, um, but I do love all the cozy sets and the props. They're very well illuminated. I find that like sort of the complete visual experience very charming. Yes. Um, I, I did want to mention one thing. You brought up Wallace and Gromit. Um, I think something that they're missing from this game is when the characters are talking, sometimes it looks a little like herky jerky. Yep. I think something they're missing, because I actually rewatched all the Wallace and Gromit stuff last year. Wow. Um, so I, I was paying attention and there's one frame where the character's teeth are kind of bared. And I think that was what was missing. Is that because characters in this game don't show teeth? Um, I don't think any of them do. I right? don't. Th I, I don't <laughs> think any of them do. Right. I think that, but it's a, kind of an underappreciated element of animating uh, speech sure. in a character yep, yep, like yep. this. Um, you had a question about some uh, some moments that happen, some 
montage moments. Yeah, I don't know if we should wait until the story section, uh, but there's something that, that jumped out as odd to me. There were these time lapses or like compilation sequences where these like synth jams kind of these 80s throwback jams play and time goes by yeah and you see these like these stop motion or like claymation almost videos playing of yeah. time going by i it happened several times and i'm not sure like how do i put this i'm not saying it wasn't intentional but i'm not sure if they did this because they just didn't want to have you play what happens during these time like, jumps it seems like it's usually characters working on like a science thing or a project of some kind yeah and my gut feeling is like they intended the plot development to happen via gameplay but i don't know it just didn't work out that way there wasn't enough time or something but it feels like a lot of significant stuff happens during those those sequences right. and they kind of just breeze by them something that you liked a lot which i want you to touch on is the notebook aspect oh, I can you talk it. about that that was probably one of my favorite aspects of the game because it it so harold um keeps a notebook of things that happen um and he does them in very uh like rudimentary drawings and it literally looks like a child drew them yes like there's one that's really funny where you you can talk to this girl in like the subway station and she says, "If you don't stop talking to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna start screaming." And he he's like, "All right, nice uh, nice talking to you." And in his his journal, it's just him running for the hills as this little girl is screaming. <laughs> it's great, it's beautiful. But you had a you had a question about it. Can you not flip back through the notebook? Am I, I crazy? I was able to using the trick, the left and right triggers. Is that how you do it? Yeah, I'm, I'm a, dude. Then I missed that because I, I was playing this and I said, "Can you only look at the most recent drawing? Like, what do you do?" Right. So I played this on Steam and you played it on Xbox. Right? I did. Okay. So it's good to know. Um, but yeah, that's how you do it. Um, should we get into uh, sound stuff? Yeah, let's get into sound design. So my first thought, I don't know how you feel about this. I felt this game has too much silence. Yeah. There's too much nothing audi audi orally happening when you're either having conversations with characters or you're just walking around the ship. Yeah. If you ask me, I actually go back to Mass Effect a little. Mm -hmm. Do you remember there's always a very subtle theme playing when you're talking to someone? It, there's like a very gentle theme when you're either walking around uh, the ship yep. or you're walking around the Citadel. There's a very subtle music playing. Yeah. In this game, it sounds like there's a lot of nothing. It's mostly just like ambient ship noise. Yeah. Really, maybe if there's like a TV or something going on in the yep. background. But you're right that the soundscape is not There very is no like overworld extensive. theme. Um, no, but I do love the music that plays when you boot the game up. Yeah. It sounds really good. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of, are you familiar with, um, Broken Bells? Yeah. The group? Yeah. Like, uh, the guy from the Shins. Yep. Yep. And, uh, Danger Mouse. Kind mm -hmm. of really cool, kind of groovy. I left a very, very positive impression as I was starting it up anyway. Yep. I feel like you, you, you hit the start menu and you start vibing out like really, I'm really like, quick. I'm in, I'm in on Harold, but, um, I, I would say the soundtrack in general Pretty good, maybe kind of an inconsistent in that way where you, you don't have a lot of... I just think there isn't enough of it. Yeah. Um, I like the weird sort of folk song that plays. There's like yodeling when yeah. you're doing the heist sequence. Yep, that yep. was cool. Um, you had a, a very personal note uh, here. <laughs> can you can you get into this so a little bit? There's a part of the game where uh, essentially the secretaries of the ship are all siblings or something. Yes. And they... W it, it, if you bring them all back together, I don't know whether that's forced or it's a choice. They have this shitty barbershop quartet <laughs> performance, like in the ship's <laughs> entertainment section. And the thing about the performance is, I think it's intended to sound bad because nothing's really harmonized. It's like they're sh they're like crappily singing in unison. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be funny. I hope I did if, not insult anyone. If it and I mean if it. If it was bad accidentally, I mean, it's more on the shoulders of whoever put it together than the actual performer. Correct. Right. I think it's intended to be kind of crappy. Yeah. But it's it's a really weird moment. Yeah, because it's not like a, a standard four heart four part harmony at it, all. It's, I, it's like some some characters are singing in unison. And right. I think you're I think you're right. If I were to I haven't looked back at the like. Uh, musical arrangement yeah but i think it's some of them are just singing in unison and one of them is attempting to do something else but it's all bad right yeah I, so my my comment was i think that your group uh bioshop infinite should cover this and, and make it really nice i thought about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> next packs next packs um so i i did appreciate also the, the guy who is presumably the composer 
um, was playing guitar in like the social area. And later you see him jamming with like, there's like an alien band. Can you talk to him? No, I don't think you can. No, he's, I, I figured that was just like a little Easter egg. Like, yeah, yeah. we'll throw you in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought the sound design was overall fine, but the way that they had the aliens speak and translated them like half a second later really screwed with me for some reason. And then the second half of the game when they introduce they aliens. They start speaking to aliens and they start communicating in like a bloop, 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 bloop. And then half the a, English is, is half like a second delayed. later, it's like, yeah. But for, I think maybe the alien voice should have just been, been mixed lower because it was it's it sounds odd. Like I can't really describe it unless you hear it. But No, I know exactly what you're saying. They, they're trying trying to do the like um i'm trying to think of a good game that does this where you, like let's go back to the early 2000s when you'd hear a little bit of a speech noise but then everything else is written like bop it up it up and then it's written yeah but this game tries to do both right where they give you the bop it up it up and also the english on top yeah and it's a little odd i, I would have pr preferred either reading the subtitles or just hearing it yeah or english maybe or when you when you click converse the a little blub blub starts but then it ends right right something like that exactly um so I, I guess i'll continue to yeah. i feel like overall the voice acting is a mixed bag mm -hmm. like i'm not now i don't want to make assumptions about the production um i'm not convinced that the actors were in the room together when they spoke lines together some right. of it sounds like it was done individually or just or the character convinced like convictions of what people are saying just isn't right all yeah, the time yeah. the inflections don't seem quite right to me all the time maybe like also i mean this game was in development so long maybe like more dialogue was recorded later yeah exactly just like, yeah. disparate pieces weird weird cadencing um kind of kind of odd reactions to stuff yep um so can we maybe on the that note run down um just sort of the list of characters if there was maybe some notable performances some less notable performances can we can you take us through this cast of characters here sure i'll go really quick yeah so harold um harold halibut the main character he's a handyman i thought for the most part he's one of the more charming characters yes I even agree. though i don't think his reactions to serious matters are right yeah they, i feel like everything with him has a tone of like Oh, gee. You know what I mean? Well, I asked you when we started it, I asked you if it was the guy from Heavy Rain, um, Ethan Mars. Oh, my it's, God. It's a very kind of almost Canadian inflection. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. geez, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I liked him. Uh, I, I liked his performance a great deal. I thought he was like the necessary, like temperature for yes. the story to proceed the next one is is it is it jean moreau or jean yeah um the scientist essentially harold's boss or it's not is it um it, 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 she kind of acts like harold's mom or like yeah, grandma it, but it's not no yeah it, she's really his boss i think right oh, I, I wanted to say also yes. before we get off harold he does sing a musical number at one point that he yeah. wants more out of life it was a very beautiful performance yeah you know actor. what when they did that i thought the barbershop thing would be better <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but what uh, so this 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 dr moreau character there's this i want to bring the fans in to sort of how riley and i talk about games before we record the episode episode yeah we we tend to like our t attach ourselves to like certain lines or certain memeable phrases and we say them over and over again yeah and balls but also they they say this in the game a lot so in this game <laughs> people either scold harold or they have a very like ugh, opinion about them. they always say things like oh harold yeah or, what he's, he's kind of like a forgetful guy a little bit of like a like silly but his uh, uh gene uh his 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 sort of supervisor or whatever yeah it's is like constantly just saying oh harold <laughs> can so we, we is it okay if we bring up the little inside joke we had can we do that now what what joke the little joke where like you and i had this bit where like alan wake is trying to talk to harold that Alvin. was just a, a sound check <laughs> that went rogue we, we really we went off the rails harold, a little bit harold it's alan wake harold <laughs> harold alan wake thinks you're shit harold. <laughs> a little a little spoiler for the upcoming uh, upcoming episodes. <laughs> oh my but. god! But we'll keep going. Um, so Cyrus or Cy, yeah, he's the kind of the mad scientist. He's a colleague of your boss. Yep. I thought. He, I think if you put Cy in the right context, he's a pretty well voice acted character. He's almost like the who's the alien in Mass Effect who's really smart. Uh, mm -hmm. One of your main allies who who. More Morden. Morden. He's kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I think I, I, he's one of the, the characters that I wish they kind of fleshed out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, Do you know what's weird about... Uh, I almost said Morden. Do you know what's weird about Cyrus? 
I I feel like his his character model looks way younger than he is. Yeah. Did you catch this? Number one dad. Where like Sonny is his daughter. Yeah, yeah. And Harold and Sonny dated. He, yeah, he looks like Harold's age. Right? right? It's kind of odd. Um, but we'll keep going. Um, Slippy, not from uh Star Fox. No. Uh he he is the sports equipment shop guy. He's like a skier, right? Yeah, he he is like well, I described him and Cyrus. They they have sort of competing plans to yes. save to save the ship, and they have a real like Biden Trump relationship. Yeah, where Slippy is like kind of a mogul, and he's like he's a really good showman, but his plan is obviously like terrible. Yes, <laughs> and Cyrus is like a poor showman, but he has like a slightly better plan. You know, yep, like yep, yep. it's a it's a great. I like Slippy a lot. Yeah, I think he's one of the better. Did characters. you do the skiing mini game? I did. I did. It's too. pretty funny. Um. So what is this one? I don't remember how to pronounce. Is it Castle Chop? Yes. And the, or they call her the CEO. Yes, Madam She's CEO. She's kind of like the CEO of that corporation that's running the ship. All, all water. water. No yeah. relation to Perfume Genius. Really good song. Oh yeah, by them. Yeah, yep. great stuff. Um, and so is it Bridget Brigitte? Right. Yeah. Um, she is an energy scientist, and she's married to Tommy. Yeah. And I forgot about this. They are the parents of Felix, who's yes. a kid. But I guess the relationship is Tommy runs a general store yeah. and Bridget is a scientist and they have some contention in their relationship, which you learn about. Yeah, it's like they, they realized that they needed like space from each other. So yeah. they're not really seen together that much. But Tommy is also there's there's a big uh, legend on the ship of uh, Filter Frankie. Yes. And it turns out that Tommy is Tommy is Filter Frankie. He like sifts through it to like find stuff to sell in his store. That's kind of one of the, the, the sort of Easter egg plot points, right? Where where does Tommy find his stuff to sell? Yeah. He finds it in the ship's filtering system as Filter Frankie. His yeah, alter ego. that's why he has the rock in his window later. Correct. So Felix, um, he's the kid of those folks who gets into trouble on the ship and he's running a secret society, which we'll talk about later. Yes. The, the light keepers. Yes. The, the fireflies. The fireflies. <laughs> uh, yep. So there's this guy, Major. I love him and hate him. Yeah. He's the police officer Harold. of the ship. He's always like, Harold. <laughs> he always like finds Harold. Yeah. Dude, you know I didn't understand about this, but like, how do they make money? Like, I don't get it. Is he paid to be the handyman? I don't, I don't know. Like, like kind of like social credit or something. I have no or idea. Like, to merit. But he also, he has his own little Frank, which is a flounder. Yes. It's, it's, it's like his secret pet. He has like an alien fish in his <laughs> yeah. room. Um, then you have Buddy, the mailman. My guy. My, our guy. We'll talk about him later. He's just, uh, I believe the thing about Buddy is he was on the ship when it crashed. Yes. He's old Older. enough to remember that. Yeah. So he's the mailman. You do a couple quests with him. Yep. And then Sunny is Harold's ex-girlfriend and she's the daughter of Cyrus. But yep. I don't think Cyrus ever brings up that you dated Sonny. No. I don't think never, he ever does. Which was weird. It's really weird. Um, but she's also the pharmacist of the ship, and she later starts like a cupcake business. That Honestly, work. Well, I don't know where they get the ingredients. How long have they been in the ocean? It's uh, the right filter Frankie. It's got uh, them dude, covered. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, and you have Raffi, not the Red Sox third baseman. No. Um, this person owns the arcade and they're like an IT person. Yes. Like internet technology. Very unfriendly. Very unfriendly. And then Zoya. Yep. Um, is the is this the captain of the ship which doesn't move? Yeah. So it's a lot, a lot of back and forth about, you know, what is his actual job? What is his actual job? <laughs> And then the the next one I have here is Chris, and I said he's the sexy teacher, he's quote my, unquote. That's my favorite character in the <laughs> game, right there. I, I looked up this voice actor; he's he's very funny. It's it's just like, hey, Harold, that, how you, how's things around the ship? That's exactly what he talks like. He essentially is like always showing his chest, and he's the he's school in like teacher. a kimono or a bathrobe the whole time. Yeah, and he does really, jogs around the station. I don't it's know, kind of a Johnny Bravo sort yeah, of. Yeah, that's pretty right. <laughs> So um, go ahead, Riley, give us the, the, I guess the quick summation here. No, I mean, so I will say that I was, I, of, of the cast, I developed a fondness for Buddy and I was pretty touched when he died. I didn't know that was coming. Um, yeah. He's, he, it's, it's just a, a little subplot that happens while everything mm -hmm. else is going on. He just passes away of natural causes and it's, it's pretty sad because you, you go, you walk past his mail station and there's just packages like overflowing. Cause like he nobody, can't deliver the mail. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I would say in general that I liked the main supporting cast, but I felt that many of them were not as vivid or memorable as they could have been. I have another question about this. Yeah. Is the game implying that all the people you talk to are the only people left, or is it just a small snippet of the colony? I think it's just a small snippet. That's what I think. You see people in like scuba suits working on the ship yeah, later. you don't talk to them. It looks like larger scale. Yeah. And there's also a lot of characters that you don't talk to. Right. Just correct. walking around. And I, I feel the same way you do where like... I, I, I'm probably, what, a week out, or you are too, from yeah. having finished this game. I can remember some of the characters and some of the interactions they've had, but I don't. it's a little bit of a mixed bag, right? Yep. I, I feel like that really ties into the gameplay and what you do or lack thereof with these characters. Yeah, th which, uh, which we can get into right we're, now. I believe we're about to. Um, I would say that, uh, all due respect to the team, I would say that the Achilles heel of this game is that there is comparatively very little interactivity um which sort of for me calls into question like the validity of the entire project um as the game went on for me it felt more and more like this could have been like a stop motion animated film you know <laughs> yeah so it's kind of like it's it's very groundbreaking but you're not really taking full potential of the that this is a game no, I agree. Like, I, I, it's hard for me to make. What's the word for this? I agree with you absolutely about that, but it's it's very hard for me to, I guess, say. Like, I don't want to disparage the team with that kind of comment. No, but I feel like at the same time, there is very little game here, yeah. right? What is this game? You talk to someone, they tell you to either go get something or talk to someone else. This game doesn't have any choices. There are no consequences. It could have been a movie. Now, in theory, there are a few choice scenarios, but they don't do anything. Yeah, like dialogue. It doesn't matter. And, stuff. and so sometimes I'm like, man, I don't know why this was a video game. I feel like this could have been a movie. For the amount of voice lines in it, there could have been some variation or choices or even like having like an inventory that you scroll through and, and choose to use an item yes. here or there, whatever. The other thing like that I want to mention about this too is I'm surprised that this game took, in theory, 10 years and did the... De I don't know. I don't want to make assumptions about the development process, but did anyone bring up like, hey, there isn't a game here? Like, I'm surprised in the past 10 years, there have been so many successful choose your own adventure games, dialogue choice games, you know, morality choice games, and this game didn't do that. I don't I think, know. I think probably what I would say is, and this is just my assumption, is that you have this incredible idea for the structure of the game or the form um, of, of having sort of a claymation video game. But beyond that, it's it, they didn't really get to like, what type of game is this? Yeah. Because um, it's, I mean, most of what you're doing, like you said, is running errands for people back and forth through areas that don't have a lot to interact with. Um, you get the run of the ship pretty quickly, I would say. Yep. Um, even when like new areas are opening up, they're not huge. Um, and you, I, you're also like fast traveling through those tubes and There's stuff. There's a lot of loading screens. Uh, looking at, at the loading screen pretty often. Um, you had some, a uh, couple other comments. Yeah. I, I don't know if you felt this way. Checking the quest log is annoying. Yeah. I hated the little startup sound too. Every time it played, it bothered the fuck out of me. I, I I don't know what's the, the body D or whatever. Oh, okay. Every time you turned it on, I I my issue with it was I kept going into messages or quests or whatever, and then hitting B to get out, and yes. it would take me all the way out. Yes, and I was like, I wanted to go back to the last thing I was. And on. I don't know if you feel this way, but like for me, it felt hard to keep track of who people are or where they are. Yeah, I thought it could have been a little more descriptive there, especially there's there's quests later on where you have to like zigzag all around the ship looking yes. for people delivering like the last of buddy's letters and so it's like wait where is this person or right at now? the end of the game when people are not in their usual spots yeah. i'm like wait where do i go like what are the where what are the parts of the ship who are the people also we didn't mention there the secretaries are just numbered sometimes uh, there were quests that involve go talk to secretary eight which one is that like, right yeah i, I don't I remember it's it's cute on the surface but it doesn't really help when you're you're doing a quest for like numbered guys who all look the same right exactly <laughs> um i had a, a quick complaint too about um i don't really like it in games when you talk to someone your character has to walk into a certain position to talk to them that's yes. the case here um, I don't know if you, that's something you noticed, but yep. I was like, oh, you're going to make me wait another couple seconds to interact Your with this Your character guy. has to essentially like 
on rails it, uh, itself back to in front of a character to talk to them. If yeah. you're not in the perfect position, you have to wait. Yeah. It's annoying. I also like there are puzzles in this game too, but there's also no failure state. Yeah, they're very few and far between. Um, I would say that there are a few that are genuinely interactive, like when you have to unclog the filter or there's like a weird puzzle at the end sort of to turn the station back on. But I felt like I was just sort of like fumbling my way through it. Like the, the last one is literally somebody talking you through it yes. on the phone mm -hmm. and it's you're just doing exactly what they tell you to do. And there were some options in the PDA I couldn't figure out a use for. Did you miss like what? Like um, when you click down in the menu, it's like settings or other, and it's just like bar graphs status and of the stuff, ship. But it like, doesn't does it not do anything? Do anything? I don't think I don't it does think, anything. I don't think. Well, it doesn't like you don't really need to pay attention to yeah. it to finish the game. Yep. Um, I did find it funny that whenever you get lost or do something weird or dumb with the the controller, like on the ship it's it's sort of in character for harold like oh i forgot something you know like that right. kind of so he's jogging around awkwardly the only like truly bad visual bug i experienced was a lot of screen tearing during those 80s montage was that the case for you i uh, know i actually experienced a bug a couple of times where zoya or joya whatever the zoya. zoya when you know the elevator is underneath his chair yeah he uh when i would take the elevator back down his character model would go through the elevator oh like, okay yeah, yeah, yeah so that happened that. no um, i actually think when your character walks up and down stairs it looks wrong every time you walk up and down stairs it feels like it was not animated it's very very herky jerky very it doesn't yeah. look right um do you want to get into the story anything else besides we go into before we go into story no let's get into the story okay uh, do, should i start yeah I would say another big flaw of this game beyond there being no real gameplay, there's no choices, whatever. The plot is so slow. Like this is not a short game. This is like a 12 to 16 hour game. Yeah. And I, I describe this as a glacial pace. It is very slow. Yeah. I, I didn't really mind it in the beginning. I was really enjoying, you know, meeting all the characters and figuring out what the situation is, exploring the ship. Um, kind of at my own pace but it really over the course of the game it starts to build up like uh, i've been doing this for a while like it's like it doesn't really make me want to revisit it and i think there is also like way too much dialogue weighing experience down and we'll get into it later like some of it's very funny um but a lot of it is very plot oriented and it's just like not that interesting yeah exactly um, but that's that's my general take on the story. If you want to get into the specifics, yeah, I'll get into like the exposition here. Yeah. So you mentioned it a little uh, earlier. So long story short, like your ship is called the Fedora, left Earth some time ago because things on Earth were dire in some way, yeah. some sort of either what famine or war or lack of resources, mm -hmm. something like that. And so you get to another planet, but you crash into the ocean of the foreign planet because of a solar wind, uh, solar winds issue yeah. within the atmosphere. So in early on in the game, there is an old transmission from Earth that gets uncovered, essentially telling your crew that conditions have improved and you you should come back. Yeah. But like, I guess they didn't unearth this transmission in time or I don't I guess or whenever that transmission came through, it's too late. You've already crashed. Um, and I guess the, the main plot of the, of the game here is that there is a two year period where the solar winds have stopped in the atmosphere and your ship can escape the planet if you can get out of the ocean and take off. But if you fail, you have to wait another 80 years for the solar winds to stop. And on top of that, there is only 90 days left in this two year safe period. And that's where Harold Halibut takes place. Yes, it's sort of a um, a more leisurely Pikmin, would you say? <laughs> You're kind of right. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I, so the beginning is pretty much just getting to know the lay of the fedora, the ship, learning that the ship is um, experiencing an imminent energy crisis on top of that. And they have that this quickly closing window uh, for leaving the planet. Yep. Um, so if we're going to get like um, into more of the, the interwoven plot here... Like, Madame CEO endorses a well-sold plan by that businessman, Slippy, to essentially freeze the water underneath the ship to yeah, kind of make it's, it it's, float. It's, it's, like, so clearly not going to work. It's such a bad idea. <laughs> but Harold, Moreau, and Cyrus don't buy into it. Cyrus begins working on his own plan to get the ship back into orbit via fuel and velocity. Duh. 
right? right? Of course. And it's just like, for some reason, his calculations aren't aren't working out. Like, they have a big That's We should bring that up. That is actually a key plot point. Yeah. Cyrus, like, he knows that his calculations are right, but for some reason, the numbers aren't working. Right, yeah. And he um, also has a failed presentation to the public because of this. Yeah, so they're like, all right, we'll just go with the freezing plan. Yeah. Um, that's, that's clearly what Cyrus has, like, a public embarrassment about yeah. his plan. Um, and there's also a key subplot that unfurls where Harold is pressured into helping this gang of children um, called the Light Keepers. Uh, over the course of the game, like you're cleaning up their graffiti and stuff. They're, they're sending you messages. You talk to someone in the bathroom. You help them dr- pilot a drone through like a vent. To, look, to spy on the CEO yeah. and all that stuff. I feel like it's easier for the audience if we just talk about this right now. Yeah. That there is a conspiracy that the All Water Corporation has been stealing time. Right. By stealing time, we mean all water is making the daytime in the ship shorter and shorter. Yeah. So they're because they're trying to conserve how long the lights are on and how long elevators or what's the what's the word? The tube system is, yeah. is operating for during the day. Right. And But they're trying to do it slowly over the course of time. And that's what these kids are trying to figure out. Right. Um, and so... Uh, do you want to get into like sort of the what really kicks off the plot here? Sure. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Actually. Okay. To this game's credit, this is at the end of chapter one. Yeah. This is, in my opinion, if I were to be disparaging, this is one of the only interesting parts of the plot. Is the end of chapter one, where during a routine clean out of the ship's filter, Harold like uh, encounters an alien fish. Like an alien fish has made its way into the filtering system. Yeah. And he calls this fish fishy. Yeah. Um, and then Harold and Moreau nurse the creature back to health, and through a translation gadget, they learn its name is Wii U. Yes. There, I have something really weird about this. Something. Th- <sighs> There's something I I don't like about how this unfolded. It, like over this the, is another montage scene. Yes. Right? So yeah. there's another montage scene, but before the montage, Harold like keeps trying to give Wii U like human drugs, like essentially Tylenol and aspirin and other other drugs like that, because Wii U has a fever. Like something is is sh- like Wii U is sick. Or yeah. s- but the game does not do a good enough job of like what are they sick with? Is it an alien sickness or is human medicine not going to fix it? How does she get better? I don't understand. Like. It's not really. It just kind of feels like there's a problem, and it just sort of sorts itself out on its yeah, own. Yeah, like I feel like, like this- you can order one of two different medicines from Sunny at the pharmacy, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because she's gonna have a bad reaction to either. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know. I just thought I thought this was mishandled. Yeah, where like you have this huge rug pull where whoa, an alien finally met an alien. Right, where whoa, an alien has entered the ship. Oh, of course, like it's the alien is friendly and you nurse them back to health and nothing matters. Right. I don't know. I I don't think this was handled right. Yeah, it's not a it's not a it's a weird like first contact moment. Yes, and I was going to ask you. Once um, she or they or however you want to refer to to Wii U, uh, once they get sort of walking around and talking, like, what do you think of the character? Uh, To be honest, it's weird. Like, what I thought was this game, I thought when this happened, this game could go in a bunch of different directions. Yeah. And what happened is this character talks just like any other character, right? Okay. They're speaking a different language. It's being translated. They're ignorant to humans. You are ignorant of them. I do like that the translator appears on the character models. Yeah, it's like an earpiece. But like, I just feel like there there just isn't enough going on. This I feel like Wii U turns into just another person you talk to. Yeah, it's really, I think the issue for me is that this character maybe should have been the heart of the story. You have like a little manufactured drama where, you know, uh, all, all the people of the ship want one thing and Wii U wants another. Maybe something like that. There's some conflict. But that doesn't really happen. doesn't really happen. Um, she doesn't really have a lot of like agency or, or stuff like that. I thought what was going to happen was I have some questions later about how this could have been rewritten. Yeah. But my, what I thought was going to happen was Harold and Moreau were going to keep Fishy a secret. Fishy was going to help you complete cyrus's plan yeah which kind of happens anyway but i thought the ceo and slippy would be you have to hide wii u from them yeah but that doesn't happen it's, so there's no conflict everyone is so that, happy with that's this. really the issue yeah um and i so what happens next is essentially 
Wii U and Harold take a submarine to the cave where we use, <laughs> I keep thinking of Kung Pao. With yeah. Wii U, Wii U, Wii U. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, uh, so you go to a cave where, where we use people live. The submarine sequence is very like on rails. Like you yes. may as well not have had the controller in your hand. Um, there is, so I guess there's a, a crack in the seafloor there that is producing some kind of energy particles that the fedora may be able to use to take off. Um, after some research, uh, Harold and Wii U venture down into the crack and they have this like out of body experience. This is also of. like one of the only interesting parts of the game. In um, my opinion. Cause they, they have like this, they have this montage where they, they, uh, develop these like bubble helmets. Yeah. And once they get down to a certain depth, they pop. And so it says that like that one of the tests they do, they, they lower some ordinary fish down there. And the one that's not protected comes back like really dazed. Yep. And so that's essentially what happens to you. But it felt to me very like, you know, a lot of games are doing this now where you have like kind of a trippy sequence where you can kind of have the assets yes. do whatever, just recycle stuff. <sighs> and well, I thought they were just going to handle this differently where I actually don't dislike this out of body weird psychological experience because between the end of chapter one and I believe this is chapter six, there's fucking nothing. Like there's nothing. This is nothing. I think chapter five. Yeah. Um. So there's just a lot of like busy work there's in nothing and i kind of like this sequence but i thought there'd be a consequence to this like You're, also like when this psychological sequence ends you come up out of the crack with the fuel source you need to take off like to, to get to save the ship it's it's weird and it doesn't really so basically the way this plays out is they have like it's it's sort of like the game we covered uh genesis noir I'm about to say that where the yep. ending you like you have to walk down you have to complete these four paths yeah but they're all leading to harold's bedroom yes and so another bug i forgot to mention that i think is actually more pertinent than it happens here uh harold instead of because you have to to trigger these um little mini sequences Harold has to get into bed and I experienced a bug where Harold, instead of getting into bed, he was just walking in place. And I'm like, I can't, this is a kind of a trippy sequence. I can't tell if this is on purpose. Yep. I think it was a bug. Okay. That probably was, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's odd. So when, when you wake up, like you have the, uh, the, the resources, you have what you need. Um, the fedora has been completely frozen because of Slippy's plan. <laughs> Um, and they, they, you have to sort of launch, launch this rescue mission to uh, warm it back up and rescue the crew. We should mention the way Slippy was intending on freezing the ship is through his air conditioning system. Yes. So he was use, he was sort of tricking everyone to thinking you like air conditioning, right? Yeah. But then he's using it as a way to freeze the ship. He also he freezes you out of the ducts when you're trying to spy on the yes. uh, CEO by yep. using the air conditioning. So um, apparently, like his plan was to turn the planet into a ski resort, dude. <laughs> I just there are so many ways you could have written this differently. It becomes a silly evil plot. Yeah, like, he wants to make the underwater ship into a ski resort, and that's the villainous plot. Yeah. Okay. So you you rescue the crew. Uh, you have to you have to solve a very basic puzzle. Um, and you you come upon Slippy and Chris knocks him out MVP. Right yeah, there. Chris Chris literally hits <laughs> Slippy and then apologizes. He's like, oh God, I'm so sorry. I don't yeah. know what took over me. <laughs> um, so this is kind of I don't know. I don't know how I felt about this either. Is that the crew realizes they have more time than they thought because of the time theft? I actually think this is interesting. Okay. Where what what the, there is an interesting part of how Harold Halibut is presented, where every time you go to sleep to end a day, yeah. a timer ticks down yeah. of how many days you have left to well, escape. Majora's Mask yes. situation. Pikmin Majora's Mask thing. But what's interesting is when you uncover the uh, the CEO's plot where they were, they were slowly shortening the amount of hours in a day, you realize that you don't, you didn't have 90 days to take off. You had much longer than that because yeah. the days are, you, you, the days are 22 hours and not 24. Yeah. So the, evil plot helped you right because it because keep in mind if the evil plot did not take place you don't have enough time to take off that's oh the the you're talking about the the ceo's plot the ceo yeah. i'm saying that sorry the not C, the freezing not plot. the freezing plot yeah the the ceo's time stealing plot ends up helping you yeah yeah and it, it's i yeah no i think it's interesting that you think that might be an unrelated subplot and it yes. pays off later but i think it would have been because we, we talked about like there's not enough conflict in this game. I think 
what would have been more advantageous is if you do the opposite of that and it's like, oh, you actually have way less time than you thought and then it's a mad dash towards the end. That's what I thought was going to happen. But they, I just thought... They do do one interesting tie-in where that's why Cyrus's math isn't working. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that too. But do you know what though? But this should have been a choose your own adventure game or sort of you have to figure that out. Yeah. Why? I think what they should have done, I have a bunch of questions about this. Yeah. Like before I get into me directing this game and rewriting this plot, I want to say one thing about how this game ends because it bothers me. And I wonder if it bothers you. I so at the end of the game, um, Harold Halibut like you, well, you, you go back to the cave. Yeah, uh, you say goodbye to Wii U, and he comes to the realization. Very slow walking scene through the village. Um, he realizes that he wants to stay, um, and then he watches the fedora take off into outer space, and he like kind of rests his head on Wii U's shoulder, and that's the end, right? So what? How I would describe this is like the ship is going to take off. Harold says goodbye to the aliens. However, he has this change of heart where Harold wants to stay with Wii U and stay with the aliens because in his opinion, he's not going to be able to see Earth again anyway because it's going to take too long to get there. However, I don't think the game tells you how long it takes to get back to Earth. No, and I I didn't get the impression. Like they... They also suggest maybe we'll land somewhere else. So. I did not like this. Where I, I thought, here's what I thought. What would make sense to me is no one likes Harold. Like everyone makes fun of him. They do, right? He's kind of a dunce. On the ship, not on in the real ship, life. Not in real life. <laughs> like everyone makes fun of him. Yeah. And if the ship was not going to get back to Earth before he died anyway, sure, stay with the aliens. They like you. Yeah. So he feels loved and desired and, yeah, and yeah. happy. That would make sense to me. Mm-hmm. But they don't, the game does not explicitly state that getting back to Earth would exceed his lifetime. So why did he do this? I, I feel like it just wasn't really, I, I feel like you needed a surprising ending and it's just kind of like, that's... I don't I, like this. I, I feel like it just, they didn't sell it well enough no, to me. Um, me like it would, it, there is a version of this where that could have worked, like you say. Um, but it just wasn't really, I didn't, you know, you get the song where he says he wants more out of life. You generally feel like he's kind of uncomfortable around people. Um, he's not really happy with, um, his day to day, day to day duties. And I guess when you're walking around the village, he's fairly enamored with it. It's like, it's yeah. kinda, I wouldn't say necessarily that he feels like he fits in there better than on the ship. They don't sell it well enough. I think that's um, the right way to put this. So let's get into your your uh, your other uh, option your your options that they sure. Pursued. So I don't know how you <laughs> feel about these options, yeah. but I'm going to relay these to you in the audience. Yeah. In my opinion, I have four or five different ideas about how this game could have been written differently. Yeah. My first thought was that like. I thought this is what they were going to do, but they didn't do it. It's okay with me that they didn't do this. They just fuck it up later. Right. I think my first thought was that maybe they were on Earth the whole time and they crashed into the Earth ocean. I had the exact same thought. I've just been watching too much Planet of the Apes. Yeah. It was Earth all along. Me too. Yeah. You know? I thought maybe the CEO and the All Water Corporation was just covering that up because they fucked it up. Because I'm like, what's the twist going to be? Right. I thought the twist was going to be, no, no, they're trapped in the Earth ocean and they can't, uh, they, and the CEO wants to cover that up right but that was not what happened i also thought maybe next the ceo would try to cover up the transmission from earth because if you think about it if they didn't have to leave earth at all someone fucked up right right where oh shit we just left humanity to do what dig around in an alien ocean for 50 years (laughs) right exactly i thought they would try to cover up the transmission but that didn't happen i also think that's kind of interesting yeah where the ceo chose to put that public yeah and then um i thought like because i quickly realized this game was not a choose your own adventure game i thought that maybe you'd either have to convince the ceo that cyrus's plan is going to work and slippies won't but it's all linear anyway yeah that, that would be, yeah, there's no like failure state no. to any of this, really. Like, I I just thought there were opportunities for this to be a failure state game or opportunities for this game to go in different directions. Yeah. I thought that, dude, we've said it a little bit already. I thought that 
for I thought how this game was going to work was to get the quote unquote good ending, you have to help Cyrus complete his plan. And how do you do that? You have to uncover the time stealing plot yeah. to get Cyrus's plan to take off and you have to stop Slippy. Right. I thought that's what they were going to do, but there's no conflict in this game and it's all linear. And it, I, it, it means like to me, it's not emotionally compelling. Yeah, and I, I think that is what I I would say is a, a detriment to this game is we actually touched on earlier, you mentioned like it's kind of resembles some of Wes Anderson's stuff, like his animated stuff, that all his movies are very kind of muted emotionally. Yeah. And it's it's a lot of it comes from sort of the subtleties of the human performance and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but in a setting like this, and it's like the for a plot conceit like this, it didn't really work for me. Me either. Um, I feel like you just needed a little bit more expressiveness and and um, kind of conflict. Right. You know? No, of course. And I also, we brought this up earlier too. I thought there would be maybe like a racial conflict between the aliens and the humans. Like, yeah, perhaps, like, oh, you're exploiting the energy source or something or like that. Or perhaps Cyrus and Harold and Moreau need to keep fishy secret so they can get the energy source they need for Cyrus's plan. Right. But that doesn't happen either. Everyone's no. just like, oh boy, let's. A fish. Everyone loves it. I, you know, I like that you. They develop like a, a, a tube stop down in the alien village and stuff. Yeah. And it, sort, it sort of starts to connect things a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it, it is very kind of, it's one of those things that happens in a montage. It all goes off without a hitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, ultimately, um, you, you, you 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 seem to have some positive uh, thoughts about like, sure. the major Sure. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think ultimately the game, if... I have a lot of problems with it, but I think ultimately the ideas they're trying to portray are thoughtful. Yeah. Right. Where it by the, come on, I'm not, they didn't sell it well enough to me, but Harold wants to have a happy life. That's fulfilling. He doesn't think he's going to get that on the ship. So he chooses not to go back to earth. I get that. I don't think they had gave me enough evidence to support that, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. I like how the game portrayed them being accepting of aliens and others positive. Mm -hmm. Right. I like um, how awkward like Harold is like around like everyone yeah. where he's awkward around like his ex-girlfriend and his boss and like all that kind of major. It's, it's, I feel like if you have to really like sift through all the dust and dirt and, and grime on this game. Yeah. But ultimately the, the, what they're trying to say is kind of thoughtful. Yeah. I just don't think they sold it. Right. I don't think so anyway. No, I agree. Um, do you want to get into conclusion ish thoughts or where do you want to go? Yeah, let's, let's wrap it up here. Um, I'll say, I'll also, um, kind of give, give the game some compliments. I wasn't expecting it to be as funny as it is. It is funny. Um, at least in the first half, it gets a little serious in the back, but from the trailer, I kind of got the impression that it could go either way. Like it might be yeah. one of those games that thinks it's funnier than it is. And if anything, it was the opposite. Like, um, I think that makes me feel slightly more favorable towards it than I otherwise would be like. The, even like your notes in the PDA, like I, yeah. I've quoted them with you like so many times. Like I do declare it snoozing time. Yeah. Or uh, he calls Moreau a noisy night owl. It's like, <laughs> what, the, what the fuck is this guy's brain? Yeah. Like, he's such mm -hmm. an odd guy. Um, I'd say that uh, as far as the complete package goes, I don't think it was uh, successful, but I'm not sure whether the team that made it would consider it successful either. I have to imagine after 10 years in development, it's like, this has got to come out at some point, yeah. you know, is this, is this exactly how they imagined it? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um, I get the impression it was just in development for too long. I even like just sort of bookmarked it. I'm like, ah, that game may not ever come out. There's yeah. a lot of like stuff that just got screwed over during COVID and stuff like that. Okay. But, um, the technical achievement though is just undeniable. Um, I think maybe, maybe someday another team will walk a run where this game crawled, you sure. know, take another crack at it. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also encourage the development team, uh, slow bros to keep trying. Um, so th because like, despite its failures, I think there is definitely some recognizable ambition here. So I do think you're right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess, should we, should we call this final thoughts yeah. before we grade? Okay. So like my final thought on this is. Yes, it's a technical achievement. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like how the, I'm calling it claymation. Yeah. Uh, how the claymation characters in the environment all blend together. Yeah. I think it looks nice. Mm -hmm. I just, f the, but this game has no gameplay. It's not a choose your own adventure game. There's no consequences of anything. There's no moral anything because it's all linear. Yeah. So 
it's just I'm kind of shaking my head at like what did I just spend 13 hours doing? Right. 13 this, hour animated movie. This game is fucking long. <laughs> yeah. Like eek. Uh, it's tricky, man. I, here's the thing. I do think this game is tasteful. Yep. I do think it's thoughtful. I don't think it's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other final thoughts on this. I think if I were to say one other thing too, I just wish the ship was more interactive too. Yeah. You do walk into restaurants and stores, but you don't do anything. You don't really gather any items. Not really. I don't know. Um, so why don't we get into, why don't we do grades? And I think we're going to, be done with this one yeah all right do you want me to start here um i'll start go uh so i i, I weighed this one heavily because okay. i do respect as i said the ambition um i'm gonna go with a c okay on this one um because i there was a game we recently reviewed called somerville which i gave a c minus yeah because i thought it was boring yeah and this game because of the technical achievement and the and the humor i think it's a little bit above that there's a couple things to like I don't think it was a success ultimately. Okay. Uh, I am going to say C minus uh, for really this. I don't know what grade I gave Somerville. It could have been a C minus. Yeah, I, I think, think it was, was close to me. Th- this game and Somerville are both have huge problems. I just, I'm not going to keep repeating myself. I just think this game doesn't have any gameplay. There's no consequences. There's no conflict. And I'm just not sure why this was 13 hours, although it is a technical achievement. And I think it ultimately is thoughtful, but as a video game, I'm going C minus. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Do you have anything else to say, or are we done with uh, Harold Halibut? <laughs> All I have to say is, oh Harold. Oh Harold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe next time, Harold. Yeah, m- maybe next time, Harold. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you guys, uh, and thank you to the development team and to the PR team for giving us a copy and allowing us to. Um, I guess express our opinions on this, give some feedback on this. I hope it's I hope it's received in the spirit it's intended. Uh, absolutely no malice intended, but that's our just our honest take. Hell yeah. Okay. Uh, so that has been this episode of God Dave GameCube. Thank you guys, and we'll catch you next time.